Hi, it's Andy, and welcome to the Hills Church Podcast. Our hope is that this will help your life and inspire your faith. Thanks again for checking us out. Hey, will you stand with me on your feet this morning really quick? We're going to do something a little bit different this morning, but uh, are you good to humor me? All good. If you are um, listening to this podcast, which maybe has started already, um, I want you to interact, but would you repeat after me if you're in agreement? Are you good? God... I believe you have a plan and a purpose for me. God, I want to hear from you. God, I am ready to hear from you. God, speak to me. God, thank you for speaking to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Give yourself a little clap. You did great. If you're in the gym running on a treadmill and everyone's looking at you, well, guess what? I believe God in these next few moments is going to speak to you. Yeah? How many of this morning wants to hear from God? Hey, we're in a collection of talks right now. We titled it Hearing God. We're using our friend Nathan Fanuku's book to kind of help us a little bit to raise the conversation. Nathan, Victoria, and I, you know, are on the preaching team, and we believe that preaching team is going to be growing. But right now, that's us. And we, um, Nathan kind of came to us a while ago and said, hey, I'm feeling God spoke to Nathan, to be honest, about, hey, we need to do this conversation in church. And we were like, we hear, we hear you. We're on board. And here we are last week. Did you enjoy the message last week? Uh, I, I was really encouraged because someone messaged us this week to say they've listened to it like four or five times, and as a preacher, I'm kind of astonished that someone would listen to me, uh, if I'm being honest, but I don't believe they're listening to me. I believe they're hearing from God. Uh, but this morning, um, I just wanted to set ourselves up again for the conversation. We used Ephesians 3 verse 20 last weekend to help us unpack the conversation, and I think the words are going to be on the screen. We're going to read Ephesians 3 verse 20 right now. But this is what it says, In Ephesians 3, verse 20, God can do anything, you know, far more than you can ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. But then that's a really cool thing because we use that verse a lot. We do believe God can do anything, don't we, church? Uh, Literally, God can literally do anything. Like, anything is possible to God. So if you're here today or you're listening to this message and you need a miracle in your life, God can do that miracle. He can provide, he, he, he can heal, He can restore, He can fix. Your story is not over. Listen here, when you're reading a book, you do not stop on page 13 if there's 100 pages in the book. You just flip the page. So I want you to know this morning that God can do anything in your life. He can blow your mind away. But this is what I love when, when I read on in the Bible because it's important that we read and understand context when reading God's Word. And we don't just take willy-nilly verses out for the crack and throw them around. For you Americans in here, crack is not cocaine, just to know. Um, it, it's just a thing you've got to learn. It's crack means pretty much anything and everything. And I don't know what crack means here. Fun. There we go. But this is what it says. He does it. God does this whole anything, you know, way more than we could ever dream or ever imagine. Not by pushing us around, but by working within us. So this morning, the incredible thing is if you set yourself up from hearing God, and and if you're a person here this morning, I talked about this last week, that kind of gets around people that uh, all they're talking about is, I heard from God, and I hear from God, and you're like, I don't think I've even really heard from God. Like, do you listen to God on the radio or something? Is it like some magic answer? Well, you're in good company because I used to feel that way. I used to get around people, and I've honestly, I kind of felt, am I even a Christian? I'm like, really? I mean, like, but I, this is what I believe. I, go, I believe God is speaking through every single thing. In fact, I think this, that your season is God speaking. You see, things about seasons is seasons come, but seasons go. And I think through every season, God is speaking. And even the season you're in right now, perhaps even maybe God himself wants to speak to you through that season. You know, maybe it is the season. We talked a little bit of this last week, and I'm kind of recapping a little bit of, you know, I didn't get the results I needed. Well, maybe God's just saying, hey, you've got to study a little bit more. You know, hey, I don't really ha- have enough money to make. Well, maybe God's just saying, hey, take an extra shift. You know, uh, uh, or, you know, I'm kind of struggling. Well, maybe, like, maybe it is you just got to get a job. You know, maybe it is got to get a... Sometimes we're kind of blocking God speaking to us by just practically moving out and putting ourselves in a place to be ready to hear from God. But I genuinely believe God is always speaking because Romans says this in chapter 10, verse 17, in the English Standard Version. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. One of the primary ways that you can hear from God is read your Bible. 
Job chapter 33, uh, chapter 33 and verse 14 to 18, and I'm just going to grab a little bit of this. It says this, for God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. So the question isn't this morning, is God speaking? The question this morning is, are we hearing? And over these next few moments that I share, I, I hope that you, yourself, hear from God yourself. From if you're here this morning and you're in youth, if you're here this morning and you know what, you're in Hull's Kids and you're in here, if you're here and you're a little bit older, you're a young adult, or hey, maybe you're like me and you're 40, that's really old. And then if you're like way up the pecking order and way up the their ladder, well then God can still speak to you. So God, this morning, I just pray, God, that you would speak to us. That you would, in these next few moments, God, you would say what you want to say. And God, more, more all, we would hear you this morning. In Jesus' name, and we all said, amen. Who knows the story of Ruth in the Bible? Anyone familiar with the story of Ruth? But this is, this is what it says in Ruth chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. And again, I, I just want to use this a little bit. I'm not going to unpack the whole thing, but I'll articulate a little bit of our story in a moment. This is what it says in verse 14 to 16. At this, they wept aloud again. Then Orpah. So the bottom line, you have a woman called Ruth, and she had two sons, and they had two wives, and her two sons died, and she's left with two daughter-in-laws. And they're called Ruth and Orpah. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi. Naomi is Ruth's mom. Your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. But I'm using this story to kind of highlight the importance this morning of hearing from God. Hearing from God is really big deal in your life. Why? For many reasons. But for simple one reason, I don't know about you, but I just don't want to live a good life. I want to live a God life. I don't want to just make good decisions. I want to make God decisions. Because good decisions, sure, they bring great outcomes, but God decisions can bring God-sized outcomes. And the, if the size of your vision isn't big enough to freak you out, well, it's a good chance it's kind of insulting to God. We should have visions. We should want to prosper. We should want to think big. We should want to change the world. We should be people. And Hills Church, we are a church that do not stand back. We are a church that wants to see every single person in the northwest of Ireland and beyond at least get the opportunity once in their life to hear the message that Jesus Christ is Lord. We want to see people come to faith and not get caught up in a religion, but a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we want to see people that then connect to Jesus, grow in their relationship with Him, and see their life changed. Today's devotion on our 21 days of prayer and fasting is a huge word, and a huge word to me, contentment. Everybody in the world is searching for the drug that we all have, and that is called contentment. In fact, the Bible says that it's a peace that passes understanding. On the 28th of February in 2008, Andy Gamble experienced contentment not through a thing, but through a person, and his name is Jesus. And my life was changed forever. Christianity is not boring. It's just I know some boring Christians. Ha, ha, ha. If you've heard that for the first time, that's a great joke. Everyone in the church has heard that every single week since we started. Isn't that a great one? I would offend some Christians. I've even got people message me saying that was an outrageous statement. But the truth is we're all different, right? And what I love about what's going on in our part of the world even at the moment, different expressions of church is amazing, isn't it? We're not here to criticize what other people are doing. Isn't it fantastic that other people connect to God in different ways to you and I? But this just is kind of the vibe that we enjoy around here. And some of these people actually think that I'm a little bit crazy. But you know what? We're going to go with God. And that's kind of who we are. And we're going to be here. And that's our thing. But we believe God can speak to you within your personality. And I want to tell you this morning, as you're even here this morning and you're hearing from God, it is so important that you hear from God. Because God has a plan and a purpose for me and for you. Like, it's not just a culture in this church of, oh, the pastor, he hears from God, we come to church on Sunday and he dishes out the thing. We absolutely 110% not. This is just a moment in our week where we stop and focus and draw near, come together as a community, worship him, hear a word, and be inspired to go out and change the world the rest of the week. 
We love that you have your own circles outside. We love that God's using you. I just spoke to a, a, a family that are visiting us from America. They were here last night in a restaurant. They met someone who comes to our church and got chatting to their husband. And, and next thing, they even got their dinner paid for. Do you want to go out tonight and eat? Where's the most expensive restaurant? <laughs> I'm buying at McDonald's. It's great. McDonald's is better here in America, just so you know. Someone said this. There was this American kid here one time, and they said this to me. They said, the McDonald's here, it tastes much healthier. And I was like, okay, healthy McDonald's. Thank you, Lord. I love McDonald's. It's gluten-free. It's amazing. The fries are full of sugar, and they're going to kill you, but they're nice. Hearing from God is hugely important. You need to hear from God. You see, Ruth and Orpah, when you look at the story, and I want you to do that for yourself. That's your homework today. Go, go, go even and have a little dig at that story. But if, if you look at the story, Orpah actually chose the good decision. As a matter of fact, if I was there and she was my daughter, I would have said, Orpah, you're in the right, you're in the right road. Go back to where the, go where the, the, the money is. Follow the, follow the dream. But, but Ruth chose the God decision. And in one decision on a road brought two very different outcomes because if you study the, the descendants of Ruth and you study, study the descendants of Orpah, Orpah, Goliath was a descendant of Orpah's and Jesus was a descendant of Ruth's. So one decision to choose a good decision or a God decision, a good decision bred a monster and a God decision It's okay, it's just a sad navigation. <laughs> You're hearing from. But the truth is this, God wants to speak to every single one of us. God has a plan and a purpose for every single one of us. God's hand is on us, church. He's on you as a person. But I just wanna level with you this morning. There is things, other voices out there. And if we believe in God, I just want to be a real old-fashioned person to say this, that I also believe in the devil too. And there are three voices out there that this morning I just want to briefly mention because for time's sake, there's three things out there that wants to distract you from hearing God's voice, and they are the world, your flesh, and the devil. It's just the way it is. There's three voices out there that we are competing with all the time. You see, in the garden, God didn't say to, to, to the Eve not to, t not, not to eat it. He said, don't, t don't touch it. He, he tries to manipulate and squeeze it. You see, he confuses us with the word of God. He even tries to compromise it. He says, you know, we're, we're, he says to you when you're, when you're single and not married, hey, go a little bit, but sure. You know, you know, he, wa he wants to, hey, but sure, don't pay your taxes. He wants to, he wants to try and manipulate what God is saying. He wants to go against it. He wants to cause you, whenever God speaks to you, to give generously, to go, hey, are you sure? Can you afford that? He wants, to, he wants to then question you whenever you're in a real tight place and go like, hey, you're never going to make it. The enemy is out there to kind of get us. Would you agree? Even Jesus himself, when he went under the wilderness, he twisted the word of God, even on Jesus. He is against us. And if we are not aware of that, we're a kind of a little bit naive. He will bring division. He will try and bring distraction. The enemy wants to distract you and I from the fullness of God. And what I love even about the 21 days of prayer and fasting, church, if I'm being honest with you, because I just think I should be honest, right? Kind of helpful when the pastor's honest. Uh, the, 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 fasting, the prayer and fasting thing has got me back. I, I had got out of a way, man, of like, just like, I, it's just increased my hunger for him. So if you haven't fasted yet, if you haven't even tried it, see tomorrow morning, easy. Eat a feed today if you want or go easier, whatever you want to do. It's Sunday. We all like to eat a lot on a Sunday. And then tonight we eat more stuff and whatever else. But you know what? Even just skip breakfast tomorrow morning with the lunch. Or you know what? Be really outrageous and hey, miss breakfast, miss lunch and with the dinner. And, and, and use the day to go, I'm starving right now, but when I'm starving, even on my lunch break, I'm going to, instead of going to the lunch hall, go and I'm going to spend time and walk in here with God. There's something about it, and it's, re it's reigniting my faith even. I'm so thankful we've done it, and we're going to do it in January again, and it's going to be something we do every year as a church, because guess what? It's all about getting to know God better. And I can see him moving. I'm hearing stories in people's lives that they're not, things are not easy, but God is coming through. 
One of the voices out there to get us is the enemy. The other voice out there is the world. There's so many distractions. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, Flipman, whatever else there is. Like, it's just the way it is. There is so many things in this world to distract us. And I just want to encourage you this morning, if you are in an element of feeling distracted, that's okay. Because the truth is, we live in a world that if you're not distracted by it, well, I don't know, but you are way more spiritual than me. Anyone else worry about their bills? Anyone else worry about their kids, their families? Anyone else doubt and think? And anyone else think, what's going to happen here? What's going on? Anyone else get a little bit anxious? Anyone else? Our flesh is the third voice that's out to get us. It leads into this. It's our desires. You see, and what I think one of the things about the flesh is, And this is where I think is really, really, I can connect so much to this, this morning, is the season of silence. Because how many of us right now are in a place where we we know we heard from God, but we just haven't seen it come to pass yet? You know, or we've heard from God, or we haven't heard from God. What I want to let you know this morning is, God is never silent. I, I can remember whenever we went to America. I told us about a story last year, last, last, last week. We went out to America thinking we were moving to America. We literally believed God spoke to us. How did God speak to us? We just had an inner peace. We could not sleep at night. Go to America. Go to America. Next thing, we called a guy in America, and he pretty much said, I was waiting on you to call. We ended up in the States, and the first night we were in America, we went to a service. And how did God speak to us? Just to articulate that a little bit better. The guy was preaching about his journey of leaving the church, and it was literally identical to ours. And God spoke to him about going to plant a church. And we were crying in the service. We had a four-month-old boy. Judah was just a baby, a tiny quiet baby. It was amazing how good he was on that trip. It was a mental trip because we were traveling and all this stuff. And we just come off an international flight and we're straight to a church service. And in a moment, God spoke into our hearts about planting a church. But if I'm being honest this morning, which I totally am, honestly, the gap between him speaking and it becoming a reality, I did not enjoy. I did not like that season. Came home Hey, everybody, how many of us know in the northwest of Ireland we're going to plant a church? It's not language you hear used often. What's a church plant? Is that like a tree? Well, kind of a tree. You know, let's talk about that. With the branches, and he's the vine. Like, like, it's not like people here were not getting it. Anyone else ever heard from God? And it sounds so outrageous that no one else understands. You're in a good place. God, if God has spoken... He's going to bring it to pass. What's God saying to you in this message? What has God said to you? Is it move location? Is it moving church? Is it moving friend circle? Is it dead in our job? Is it do a different thing? Is it to sow generously? Is it to start giving? Is it to pray for the sick? Is it to believe for healing for your own life? Is it to change direction? Is it to do something? Is it to do something totally crazy like planting a church? But the silent ground is real ground. But David waited patiently, using David as an example. You see, I think that the devil hates patience. He hates someone quieting down when life gets noisy. I think it freaks him out. Because the truth is this, that at the moment, we are at an all-time high with mental health records. Like literally, it's the buzzword right now. Mental health, mental health, mental health. It's the buzzword. And I think the enemy is in a field time because when 
things go quiet as it is in a middle season where, you know what, I'm not seeing anything really breakthrough. I'm da 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 da. You know, we came back out of Colorado and it was like Rubicon, Wrangler Rubicon Jeeps, a lot of energy, a lot of people, and vroom, back to driving a tractor or spreading slurry from a brother John. In the rain. And pretty much everything I'd done in that season kind of went wrong. Like, I flooded the yard one day with slurry. Like, they have a tank that holds a million gallon of slurry. Slurry, you can work with slurry. If you don't know slurry, you can Google it later. It's cow poop. Just it. I left the, I just decided that would be a good idea that I would leave the tank lying open and head off to the field. Came back to a river of it. There was days when I was sitting in a tractor in Bally Kelly, and I can tell you something now. 110% I question God. Do you see me? Are you having a laugh? It's like church plant? I didn't even know what to set up a website, never mind that. Victoria's figuring out having kids, working. I was like, really? Yeah, sure, it's easy now because, easier now, because we're started, we're going, God's provided, God's done things, even yet to this day. You think, I, you think the enemy ain't after me? You think he doesn't want to bring, you think he doesn't want to give us a rattle? Hey, hey, every single one of us, we've got to be aware of it. So if you're here this morning and you're listening to this message and you're, you know what, have a bit of question, you have a bit of thing. Wait in God. I spoke with someone recently. I've had a few conversations this week, and the people said, what's the advice? And I said, I know the advice. I know it. What is it? You've got to give God space. Go to him first. You have an idea in your head? Brilliant. I don't care if you have an idea that's got the best business plan in the world, that's got the potential to blow up and charge every battery and blow up the world. I don't care what it is. If it is not God's idea, do not go near it. I don't care if it's a flipping the best business plan that I've ever seen and you know what makes sense. It makes so much sense. It's outrageous. If it's not from God, do not go near it. Because we are not led by our senses. We are led by our spirit. And I want to tell you something now that planting a church in the northwest of Ireland and, a, and you know what, we, the things all didn't go the way we wanted it. We thought we were going to, remember we were in a pub in Balmagory, we were in, the, in Floyd's pub at the side of the road and then we were, we were looking at theaters in Strabane and all that stuff went on and do you, know, you know what I want, to, I want to tell you something now, if you are feeling rejected today, you're not being rejected, you're being redirected because God knew where we t- were to be, Yeah. And when we came here at the start, they were a bit unsure of us and whatever. And you know what? Just a little side story. You know what I got to do yesterday? The church got to do yesterday? The church got to marry the CEO of the Waterside Theater. If that's what his title is. Director, I think it is. I got to go yesterday and facilitate his wedding. Marrying the amazing Annette. And I got to pray for them. And I got to boast and tell them that Jesus Christ is Lord. I surely think that means a wee clap there. And that isn't because I'm the fancy preacher or da 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 or whatever, whatever. Uh, it's because God has us here. And God spoke and he says, this venue, we rock up and da 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 And sure, I know last week the lights weren't working and whatever's going on, they're granted. And, and sure, this morning it's a little bit cold. But it ain't a building, it's the people. The church is not the building, it's me and you. And if you're in a place this morning that, you know what, things are feeling a little bit quiet, do not get caught up in it. The most important place you need to be in a season of silence is in the seat that you're sitting in right now. Get around the right people. Surround yourself with godly, wise counsel. Settle down, pull it back 
And because I don't know about you, but in my season of silence and in waiting, I wanted to kick and I wanted to fling and I wanted to try and sort it out. I wanted to try and fix it. I wanted to try and go and make this conversation and I could go and meet that person because I, I can tell you something. I pretty much, I know, I know a lot of people. Yeah, like I, I talk a lot. Anyone else realize that? Yeah, I know. I even talk in my sleep apparently. But, but, but I, I have so many good ideas. It's unbelievable. My mind never stops. I know you never knew that. I know you're shocked. I, I can't stand still. Sure, I know. But this is who I am. Please hear this morning. I'm saying that for me to give you permission to be you. And if you're here this morning and you're kind of trying to figure this whole God thing out, let it be. Settle down. Let God come to you in a place of peace. There's no panic on it. There's no rush on it. This is not a race. Yeah, I, I want to encourage you, knuckle in, join the prayer and fasting journey. This weekend, this week we're starting groups. Do you know what? Just join a group, be a part of it. You're going to get to know some other like-minded people. They're going to maybe encourage you. I was talking to Josh about this this week. We talk of the Bible. It says in the Bible that iron sharpens iron. And I know a little bit about metal, just a little bit. But I know this, when you rub two steels together, it's friction. Like, it's not easy sometimes. And, 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 but it's healthy. Like, when you're, in your marriage, in your relationship, sometimes there's some friction going, Victoria's going, Andy, I don't think this, and I'm going, hey, Victoria, I don't really think this, but guess what? It makes us better people. Josh and I have, he's been helping me learn and think about different things, and honestly, it's causing my brain to go like, I don't want to hear that, it's got me a little bit uncomfort, but it's making me a better person. So if you're here this morning and you're in a place of like, God, I think God is speaking. I don't know if God is speaking. But if you're in a place of you're feeling silent, well, guess what? Relax on it. Because the enemy wants you to kick. He wants you to turn to alcohol. He wants you to turn to drugs. He wants you to turn to smoke. He wants to turn you to, to the wrong roads. He wants to turn you to doubt and worry and shame and guilt and anxiety and depression. And he wants to isolate you. How many of us know there's so many different prisons out there than a physical prison? He wants to trap you. He wants to rob from you. He wants to steal from you. He wants to destroy from you. But God wants to bless you. And God wants to speak to you. God is speaking to you. Are you listening? And even this week as you're thinking about this and you're praying for it, maybe the season you're in right now, I know that there's people in this room that God is speaking to I know there's people in this message that, that, that they're listening to this. I think this, that God's speaking to every single one of us that's sitting, that's, that's connected to God. I think God is speaking to everybody. I think God was speaking to me long even before I give my life to Him. I think God was niggling and nudging and giving me because I spoke a little bit about the enemy there. Now, I want to speak about God. God was encouraging me. He was, he was putting people on my path long before I became a Christian. All of a sudden, just by fluke, my co-pilot was a Christian. 2004, Isle of Man, BRC, British Rally Championship, got a new navigator, and he is the best. I think Johnny Church is one of the best co-pilots in the world. You could not scare that man. In fact, he annoyed me, because I was trying to impress him, a big 110 mile flick in the sky and go, like, he must be scared now, and he's going, keep her listening to me. Like, what? I thought that was pretty cool. He was steady. He, he, he breathed. He was just like, he, he brought peace. In fact, he, was, he said one comment to me one day, we were, we were going to a night stage in Druidal, a stage in the Isle of Man, and my dad will probably know it was bad fog. And I was like, I was trying to be all these other people. And Johnny put his hands over and he goes, Andy, just be Andy Gamble. Relax yourself. He'd pray for us at the start of the stages. And then at nighttime, we would go to the room. And, and instead of going to the bar, he, he would say, I want to go to my room and read my Bible. See, God was speaking to me. Before I get in the door of a church, God was speaking to me. And then I, I, I would be like the next morning going like, how is he so content? And I'd ask him questions about, where does your peace come from, Johnny? How do you, he'd say, I have God in my life. I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a Christ follower. He'd say, obviously I was taken to Sunday school, my, my mom was a Christian, but, but there were so many other things that God was using. See, God is in, can do anything, you know, way more than we can ever dream of or imagine, not by pushing us around, but by working with inside us. Like, like even before, the, uh, before I was even in the church door, I, I, I met a priest from... America, who was studying theology in Rome and came to Ireland on New Year's Day to make a pilgrimage to God on Croke Patrick Mountain. And I just happened to meet him. Anyone else think that's a coincidence? God. 
he sent me down the rock and we hauled water and they just had bunches of water. I don't really know if they were angels or humans right now when I think back on it. But he would say to me, hey, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And if God is for you, there's a little verse you see in my house that God was speaking to me. Come down to the mountain, walk into a church, and the first sermon I heard, the first day I walked into a church in the city was the contentment. In fact, do you know what? Even God used non-Christians to speak to me before I got saved. I had the privilege and honor of speaking to a guy called Sebastian Loeb. He was here for Rally Ireland, and Rally Ireland was the WRC. Remember, if any of you Rally fans, it came to Ireland. It was amazing. And I got the honor of doing double O, and double O means you get to go on the road first before everybody. So funny, I had the secretary of state of my, in my rally car, the secretary of state of Northern Ireland. I think he was called Peter or something. I don't even remember his name. I didn't even know him. He gets in the car beside me, and he says, this is what he said to me, this is a funny story. He said to me, so what do you do? And I said, oh, well, I run an engineering business, a small business, and a farm a little bit. And then I turned around, and I said, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is what he said, I'm the secretary of state of Northern Ireland, Andy. I was like, I was like, great. If I'm being honest, I don't even know what that meant. I was like, oh, wow, that's so cool, man. And then afterwards, I was like, what's the Secretary of State of Northern Ireland? Peter, he, I think, I don't even remember the guy's name. He's some English guy. Maybe you guys remember him. Uh, who? Could have been. <laughs> but at night time, we got sitting down with all the lads, and there was a guy with me, Gary McElhoney. If you're listening to this message, Gary, you'll, you'll, you'll remember this, I think. And uh, Seamus and all the guys that were flying this guy around and stuff. And I, I, I remember sitting chatting to him. And, uh, he, he was, and, and this is what he said to me. He said, like, I was asking him all these questions about like, driving. Like, what, what way do you, how do you do what you do? Because he's a pretty unique driver. And, and this is what he said to me. He said, uh, he says, listen, listen to I tell you in his French accent. He said, this is what I tell you in a moment in his wee French accent. The guy knew. He just knew because he's a pro like nine time world rally champion the guy knows what he's doing he said content mind content rally he said you Andy Gamble not content I was all <laughs> <laughs> no I was like I was waiting for like a handbrake or you know no left foot no God spoke to Somebody in the Bible through a donkey. You're not being parked. You're being protected. We could talk all day. We've got to close because the Hills kids, guys are going to get. Who's God speaking to? He's been to your period of season of pain. Van, do you want to come up? We're going to close. Is he speaking through the? Is he speaking to you through someone who's not even a Christian? Guy didn't know. He didn't mention God to me, but what that guy didn't know was that me and God was having a bit of a conversation. Because I was like having all these other meetups with all these other Christians, you see, because none of them were by fluke. God knew exactly what he was doing. God knew that I needed a co-pilot that was a Christian, because I'm telling you. When you have a co-pilot and you're driving a car the way we were driving, you get to know each other really well. Because if you don't, you're not going to live. But I respected him. There was something about him that he had that I hadn't got. Guess what? It was contentment. That word contentment. He'd come to this guy and say, Andy Gamble, you don't need another fancy handbrake. I mean, I think you're absolutely crazy. In fact, I could not drive that tin can the way you drive it. And I was buzzing off that. I was like, yeah, I'm a man now. And then I was like, the next stage, I'm going to get the secret of Sebastian Loeb and flick my car even faster not content he said in the moment in the middle of a stage and this is true when you're in the middle of a stage you have can brain fade it's like easy it's like so easy people crash all the time just brain fade you've got to be dialed in when you're racing every second you cannot let it go you can't let it go at all and if you're not content he said like you're in a moment 120 mile an hour straight even at 120 mile an hour in a rally car down a back road in Ireland you can have brain fade your concentration can leave because you just get used to it and you get soft arms and you start to relax and the car starts flowing and then next thing you're just and there'll be things under my mind about, man, I'm not, there's something not, not right about my, 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 my situation. I'm not at peace. And then I walk into a church and this guy goes, contentment. And the only way that you can find contentment is through Jesus Christ. And I have found that peace. I have heard God. I have experienced His goodness. I have experienced that I 
of he is for me, no one can be against me. I am loving today, content. And you can have that too. And you can hear from God too. And what way is God speaking to you? Is it through a big event and it's really, really good? Because he can speak to you through any single thing. Is it the season of blessing or is it the season of bad? You see, when you're in the season of blessing, you're worried. You know what the enemy does? He makes you worry about lack. When you're in the season of nothing, he's making you worry, will you ever have any? When you're in the season of normal, it's just like, this is normal. But God is speaking through all them seasons. If you're in a season of lack, you know what? Use that as an opportunity to go, God, I'm going to trust you for provision. Yeah? I can tell you story after story after story about God providing. Uh, if you're in a season of God having too much, well, guess what? Hap, hap, hooray. Be sensible and do something with it. If you're seasoned in the middle ground, if you know what, it's just like whatever, well, you know what? Get in tune with God because He wants to speak to you. He already is speaking to you. Stand with me as we close in prayer. God, thank you for speaking to us. Hey, why don't you repeat with me this morning? God, thank you for speaking to me. God, I want to hear more clearly from you. God, whatever I'm believing for, I'm trusting in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God a wee round of applause this morning. Hey, thanks again for checking out the Hills Church podcast. Hey, if this message has inspired or encouraged you in any way, why don't you share it with a friend? Hey, as well as that, we meet every Sunday at 11 a.m. at the Waterside Theatre, and we'd love to see you at one of our services. But hey, thanks again for checking out the podcast. Why don't you subscribe to our channel?